You know, in the history of Canada, we've had different religious faiths or semi-cults and cults that have risen to prominence. Now, this group of people, uh, I consider a cult. Some people don't because you consider them a, a pacifist a re Christian religion that tries to stay away from worldly things. But when the leader of the Duke of Wars, who basically was blown up, in relation to uh, presentation of his faith to his followers, it was a time in Canadian history that if people look back and say, did this really happen? I hate to tell you, it really happened. Now today we're going to be talking about the curious case of the death of Peter Vasiliv Vas Vasilevich Ver Vergin, also known as Peter the Lordly Vergin. Now, he uh, was a Russian philosopher, activist, and a leader of the community Duke of Wars in Canada at the time. Now, he was born on July 11th in the village of Slan Vaka in, uh, the Ru in the Russian Empire. The village was located in northwest as well as the, today, the Republic of Azerbaijan. It was one of the settlements founded by the Duke of Orgs, which was a large sect of communally living peasants exiled to the Trans-Caucasia from Ukraine in southern Russia in the 1840s. His father, Vasily, was an illiterate but reportedly rich peasant who once elected a village headman, showed himself a real despot. Now, July 11, 1859 is the Feast of Saints Peter and Paul. Although the Duke of Wars do not traditionally venerate saints, this day is known as St. Peter's Day. It is, it is still a traditional day of celebration. It is possible that a ver, Verge was named after St. Peter. Now, Peter was one of seven brothers. Peter and his two older brothers, Vasily and Grigori, were homeschooled, at least to the extent of learning to read and write. There were no formal schools in Dorkovar village at the time, and his four older brothers did not study. Now, in, the early, in his early 20s, Peter married Ev Evdakia Georgievina Kotlankova. In 1882, soon after his marriage, his wife was expecting their first child, Peter. And Verja started working as a secretary and administrative assistant for the leader of the Transcaucasian Duke of Wars. Uh, Luk, Luk Vela Vasilivina. Now, uh, Lukera Gubanovona was a widow of the community's previous leader, Peter Kalmolikov, and was also known as Frala Kalmakova by her late, late husband's surname. The Kalmakov family resided in the village of Gorlovaka, one of the Duke of War communities in Georgia, shown on the J.J. Kalmakov's maps. In the Sertsi Dom, or the orphanage, the facility serving as a Duke of War headquarter and a home for orphans and the agent, Lucanada was respected by the provincial authorities who cooperated with the Duke of Wars on various matters. While working for her and living at her residence, Verjan received an extensive religious education and was prepared by the childless Luka, Lukaraya to become her successor as the leader of the Duke of Wars. He became acquainted with the Duke of War ideas of administration, which rejects secular government. The Duke of Wars also rejected rejected the holiness of Jesus Christ in the Bible and were naturally pacifists and conscientious objectors who refused to participate in wars and battles. Now the death of Luca Raya in 1886 was followed by a leadership crisis. A portion of the community known as the Large Party accepted Peter as his or designate successor and leader. Others known as the Small Party sided with Lucera's brother Mikhail Gubinov and the village elder Alexei Zubkov. While the large party was in a majority, the small party had the support of the older uh, members of the community and the local authorities. Now, on January 26, 1887, at the community service where a new leader was to be acclaimed, the police entered and took Verja away. He was to spend the next 16 years in government custody. The large party Duke of Wars maintained contact and continued to consider him their spiritual leader. Now, Ver Verja was first sent to Shankorsk uh, in, uh, in the Russian north, arriving in October 1887. In the summer of 1890, he was transferred to Kola on the Barren Sea. At the time, Kola was Russia's northernmost town, as Mubaransk and uh, Polyami were not yet built. In November 1894, he left Kola for Obdorsk, now a Selink, uh, Selikard in northwestern Siberia. Now, in Shenkursk, Verja and several exiled Duke of War elders shared two houses. When the small band of Duke of War exiles was visited by Peter's brother Grigori in his September 1888, he was impressed with the complete vegetarianism as Grigori's family in South Caucasus, 
uh, Kakakas was still eating meat. Now, in November 1894, as being transferred from Kola to Obdorsk, Verja wrote a message to the Duke of Ors, asking him to obey God's commandment, Thou shalt not kill, to destroy your weapons and refuse military service. His message was taken to the Caucasus by his brother Gregory and Vasily, who spread it throughout the Duke of Ors communities. Soon a confrontation between pro version pacifist Duke of Ors, a large party, and the government drafting your youth came to a head. On Easter Sunday, 1895, 11 Duke of Ors conscripts refused to do military training, and in the following days, more conscripts laid down their arms and released refused further service, and reservists were returning the registration papers to the draft boards. Finally, on the night of June 28, 29th, 1895, uh, the night before St. Peter's Day, Verjan's birthday, the large party Duke of Ors of uh, Transcaucasia assembled the three villages to burn the weapons they own, commemorate since as the burning of the arms. Now, arrests and beatings by government Cossacks followed. Soon, Cossacks were built into many Duke of Ors houses, with the original inhabitants dispersed throughout remote villages and regions. Now, John Ashworth, the Duke of Story and Religious Persecution of Russia, archived at the uh, Wayback Machine, talks about that and the Duke of Orge genealogy uh, website as well. Now, horrified at the plight of his followers, in August 1896, Verja wrote to Empress Alexandra, the wife of Nicholas, making another proposal to resolve the conflict, such as the resettlement of a large party Duke of Ors to some remote province of Russia, assuming that an exemption for military service could still be granted or emigration to Britain or Canada. Now, Leo Tolstoy and associates addressed Russian and international public with letters and articles about the persecution of the Duke of Ors. Now, in 1898, an agreement was reached with the Tsar Minister of the Interior, Ivan Dum, Dum, uh, Dolov, to allow the Duke of Ors to move to Canada. Between 1898 and 1899, 7,500 Duke of Ors from Transcaucasia did so. Of them, some 3,300 were members of the large party. The rest belonged to a small and a middle party. Among them were Verja's mother, Anastasia, around 80 years of age at the time. Smaller numbers of Duke of Ors, directly from Trans-Caucasia, uh, from various places of exile, continued moving to Canada years to follow. Now, in the fall of 1902, after 16 years in exile, Verja was released from Obdorsk. He visited Tolstoy in October and joined his people in Yorkton, present-day Saskatchewan, in December. 1902. Now, Verja was to visit Russia again only once. He came in 1906, leading a devil delegation of six Duke of Ors to investigate a possibility of the return of the Duke of Ors to Russia. Now that a result of the Russian Revolution, religious tolerance had been legislated. Verja's delegation met with Stolpin and other ministers who made an offer of land in the Altai, southwest Siberia, an exemption from conscription. Although the offer was personally confirmed by Nicholas II, Verja felt that, no matter what, the Duke of War situation in Russia would not be as secure as in Canada, and in March 707, his delegation went back to Canada. Now, there, this is where the problem began. Verja established his first Canadian residence of the Duke of village of uh, Porto Pevshi, the victims or perhaps their survivors out of translation, some 15 kilometers north of Kamsak, Saskatchewan. On a joyful occasion of reuniting with their leader, the villagers renamed the place Ortra Doin, uh, the place of rejoicing. Ortra Donoy, Doin or Doné, continued to be Verjan's headquarters until 1905, uh, uh, or uh, some say only 1904. The nearby village of Nadzada was the site of the annual general meetings of the Duke of War community chaired by him. When a new CNR railway line crossed the Duke of War Reserve in 1904, some 10 kilometers south of Autry Doin, Denoy, a small station named after Duke of War leader, which was misspelled spell initially Verjan, Siding with a V, V R E G I N, and after 1908, Virgin Station was built around 1904 to serve the needs of the Duke of Or community of the area. A village, also known by the name Virgin, sometimes spelled V E R I G I N, at least on Virgin's own C C U B letterhead, was built next to the station, and Virgin's headquarters were shifted there. Now, in 1905, the exiled Duke of Ors rejected the newly enforced requirements of the Canadian Dominion Lands Act, which attempted to register the communal lands under individual ownership and rebelled against the request. Following this in 1907, the communal land system 
Nelson was abolished, and in 1908, Verjan led about 6,000 of his group, the Christian Community of Universal Brotherhood, or the CCUB, all the way to BC. CCUB still continued to own some properties in industrial facilities in Saskatchewan, and his headquarters remained in Verjan for some years to come. Virgin had another residence built for himself near Grand Forks, B.C., spending the rest of his life sharing his time between the two provinces. Now, this is where the, the, the assassination came in, and it's still a mystery what happened. He was, again, knocked off in a still unsolved Canadian Pacific Railway train explosion on October 29, 1924, on the Kettle Valley Railway, now known locally as the Columbia and Western Railway. Uh, near Farron between Castlegar and Grand Forks. Now, this blast also killed the 70 year old secretary Marie Strelieff, member of the provincial legislature John Mickey, PJ Campbell, Hakim Singh, Harry J. Bishop, W.J. Armstrong, and Neil E. Armstrong. No, uh, no relation. The government initially during the investigation had stated the crime was perpetrated by people within the Duke of War community, while the Duke of War suspected Canadian government involvement. To date, it is still unknown who was responsible for the bombing and is one of the biggest unsolved mass murders in, again, Canadian history. But what is uh, bizarre about this, Duke of Wars don't talk. <laughs> Because of the, you don't want to deal with the government, so uh, we don't know what type of weapon, we don't know what type of TNT, we don't know where it occurred, but it did occur. Now, Verjan's grave is located near Brilliant, a historically Duke of our village outside Castlegar. Now, after his murder in 1924, the majority of the community Duke of Ours proclaimed his son Peter, who was still in the USSR, as his successor. However, several hundred Duke of Ours recognized PV's widow, Anastasia. Uh, Goryubovov had been who had been Virgin's wife for some 20 years as their leader. In 1926, Anastasia's father split from the CCUB, forming a breakaway organization called the Lonely Christian Community of Christian Brotherhood. They left BC for Alberta, where they set up their own village at Schuldice near Arrowhead, Alberta, which existed until 1943. In the meantime, Virgin's son Peter arrived from the USSR and assumed the leadership of the CCUB in 1928. And after their bankruptcy uh, uh, of the lady uh, later, he organized the Union of Spiritual Communities of Christ in 1938. Now, when Peter died in 1939, the community Duke of Ors proclaimed his son Peter Petrovich Virgin II as a new spiritual leader. But as he was in Soviet prisons at the time, his son. And Peter Vashilov's Virgin's great grandson, John J. Virgin, who was 17 at the time, became the de facto leader of the USCC. Now, uh, there's various uh, publications that uh, Virgin's work, uh, especially in 1901. Uh, uh, called The Letters of the Duke of Our Leader, Peter Vashilius Verge, was published by Anna Chertkov. Now, the Duke of Wars within Canadian, uh, uh, they ca they are only number 20 to 30,000 people at the most. Now, uh, you hear them every once in a while. Are the Duke of Wars uh, dying out? It's uh, the, but uh, if you, if you really look at uh, what you call a, a religious sect, in uh, movements. This is the best way to describe it. Now listen to this, it's quite interesting. Again, uh, the Duke of War, again, uh, the, the Russian name, the, 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 the slang translation is called Spirit Wrestlers. They shun, again, military service, meet religious hierarchy, and governments. They have more in common with the Baha'i faith than with Christianity. Theologically, it's a cult of Christianity as they reject essential doctrines of the Christian faith. Now, again, the Duke of Wars practiced their own form of Christianity and believed that Jesus Christ is a spiritually advanced teacher and example to others. They also believed that people are capable of divine reason and can spiritually develop without the help of intermediaries. For them, therefore, there is no need for priests, religious ceremonies, spiritual symbols of temples of worship, although they have been leaders among the Duke of Wars, again, like we just mentioned, who have exercised considerable authority. The only symbols Duke of Wars commonly recognize are those of bread, salt, and water the basic elements needing to, to sustain life. These are on the table at all Duke of War meetings and important events. Now, various publications uh, 
uh, talk about that. Now, the, the Freedomites are uh, a, a, a splinter group with the Dukovors. We're not going to talk about that because it's very, that's more freaky than it's just straight uh, uh, Dukovors. But what, what's weird about the Dukovors, again, uh, the, the Canadian prairies, uh, the development of that uh, is uh, quite interesting. Now, the, the two cohort splinter groups uh, include, uh, again, the Sons of Freedom. Now, they're also known uh, uh, for nudism and harassment as protests. Now, talking about the Sons of Freedom, freedom they protest against materialism, the land seizure by the government, compulsory education, government schools, and, of course, Verizon's assassination. This led to many confrontations with the Canadian government and the RCMP, continuing until the 19, 1970s. Now, Nudism was a new technique first used after arrival in Canada. They used violence to fight uh, modernity, and they destroyed threshing machines and other sides of modernity. With nighttime arson, they burned schools built by the Duke of War commune and, and even Verge's house. Now, during 1947 and 1948, uh, Sullivan's Royal Commission investigated acts of arson and bombing attacks in B.C. and recommended a number of measures intended to integrate the Duke of Wars into Canadian society, not only through education of their children in public schools. Around that time, the provincial government entered into direct uh, negotiations with the Freedomite leadership and uh, Wack Bennett's social credit government, who came to power in 1952, took a harder stance against the Duke of War problem. In 1953, 174 children of the Sons of Freedom were forcibly interned by the government agents in a residential school in New Denver, B.C. Abuse of the interred children was later alleged. Now, in less than a half a century, acts of violence and arson by the Sons of Freedom rose to 1,100 separate incidents, uh, costing over $20 million in damages, that including public school bombings and burnings, bombings of Canadian railway bridges and tracks, the bombing of the Nelson Courthouse, and a huge power transmission tower serving the East Kootenay District, resulting in a loss of 1,200 jobs. Many of the independent and community Duke of Wars believed that the Freedomites violated the central Duke of War principle of nonviolence with the arson and bombing, and did they therefore did not deserve to be called Duke Wars. Now, there's still Duke Wars remaining in Russia, but like I said, the current population has been estimated to be 20 and 40,000, uh, including some 30, 3,800 them claiming to be pure Duke of War, again, as a religious affiliation. Now, allegedly some 30,000 people of Duke of War here just still live in Russia, and in 2011, there were 2,290 people in Canada who identified the religious affiliation as Duke of War, and uh, by in Russia at the time of the 2000s, there was only 50. Now, the uh, during the Canada 2011 census, 2,290 persons in Canada, uh, 1816 BC, 200 in Alberta, 185 in Saskatchewan, and 25 in Ontario identified the religion and affiliation as Duke of War. As the age distribution shows, the proportion of older people amongst those self-identified Dukovors is higher than among the general population. Now, uh, uh, all Canadians at in 2001, 30 million people, self-identified Dukovors uh, were mostly in the older age group. Uh, at one point, it was almost like uh, 60%. Now, the Duke of War population has declined, self-identified, but of Duke of War heritage, like I said, in that 15 to 20,000 uh, uh, range. But the self-identified Duke of War population at its peak, 12,674 in Canada, down to, again, less than uh, 3,000 in 2011. I haven't seen the latest census. Now, you're probably saying, what? why am I doing a podcast on the Duke of Wars? Well, bear with me for a second. There's very few cults that Canada, or what they call Christian splinter groups, or we can call our own. There's no focus with the Duke of Wars, like I said. The bombings, the nudity, basically what happened, you would take off all their clothes and set things on fire, or blow them up, as a sense of protest. Who put that in their mind, I don't know. Uh, you know, maybe the clothes uh, represented, uh, you know, humanity, but yet they're using dynamite, which is... 
still a representative of a Chinese culture at the start. Very bizarre. But if you <laughs> if you ever do a movie on the Duke of Wars, I'd like to know if if like do you know what a Duke of War looks like? Like I, I haven't have never met a Duke of War. Would he look like a Muslim? Do he would look like a Sikh or a Jew or a Christian or, or a Baptist? I don't know what they look like. So I couldn't identify a Duke of War. Like I said in Alberta, if you see somebody on the side of the road, like in the Maritimes, eh? Okay, in Maine, we see a lot of Amish. The Amish usually at the stores, they got their house, you know, horse and buggy and all uh, interesting stuff. But the, you know, the Duke of Wars were, you know, they're, they're a dangerous bunch of people. Can you imagine if they were in the Maritimes? But I think what happened because the Russian uh, part of Russia they were from, you wanted to go to part of Canada that mimicked their part of Russia. But like I said, they're still around, so they, like I said, they're, uh, they're a hardy bunch of people because from what I heard, like I said, it takes a lot of uh, understanding why you would follow a faith that doesn't make any sense to the regular, you know, study of the faith or people that uh, study spirituality like I have. So that's the story of the Duke of War leader and the the interesting, part of the interesting history of the Duke of Wars in Canada. If you like what we're doing here with our Canadian, uh, what do you call history or crime stories, let us know with a like, comment, or subscribe. I know it's pretty deep. Please go on the Canadian Encyclopedia, different web pages to read more about the Duke of Wars. And again, uh, Book of Lists, uh, talk about that as well. And to see a photo of a naked, out of shape woman in the middle of a snow snowstorm watching a farm burn is one of the most interesting photos in Canadian photography history. I saw that as a child, and even now I can't explain what it looks like. Literally, she's got rolls of fat on her back body, or lower body, like her buttocks and her back, and literally she's got her hand, she's, she's frozen in the snow, and she's watching something burn. You can't make this up. Thanks for listening. Bye.